Good evening, people of Halfway Tree. Evening, people of Halfway Tree. We are the Three Angels Messengers, and we are here to share with you this evening the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. At this time, we want to ask that you lend us your ears a bit when you are here, and we pray that your hearts will be touched by the Spirit of God. At this time, we invite you to listen while we share in this message. At this time, we will pray to welcome the Spirit of God in our midst. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we truly give you thanks for allowing us the opportunity to be here this evening to witness to your people. And as we go forward now with the message, I ask that you will send the Holy Spirit to even touch the hearts of the people so that the hearts will be touched. I pray that you will be with every person, every hero today, and let the message go forth with clarity. Be with us, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All your soul salvation to think about what it means to give your life to Christ. To have a relationship with Christ, the busyness of the season may choke. The cares of life may come and may take from your mind the thought that what will happen if something should happen to you and you should go under the earth. What will be your answer to Christ when he comes? Don't let the busyness of the season cause you not to think about these things. For surely, Christ is coming. Surely, Christ is coming again. And it's coming. It's very soon. Closer than you believe. For just about, we're living, as what the Bible tells us, in the last days of earth's history. These are the times when Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. These are the times when the Bible says that perilous times shall come. These are the times when men art are failing them for fear and for looking after the things that shall surely come upon the earth. Crime and violence, bloodshed, the government cannot control what is happening in society. It is because we have strayed from the laws of God. It is because that human beings no longer recognize God's authority in the earth. For God has given us the law of love. God has given us his ten commandments, which if we keep them, we will we'll love one another supremely and love God as we have love. But this is the principle that Jamaicans are violating. That is the reason why you cannot live in peace with each other. We cannot live in love and unity for no government policy can stop the moral decline it can only be stopped by christ himself so my message to you in the year of my voice tonight to offer a tree is to turn and give christ a chance don't let the business of the season cause you not to think about eternal things for surely one day one day soon we will have to stand before the creator of god one day soon you will have to stand before the judgment bar of God for we are now living in the judgment time as we speak to you. Christ is in the heavenly sanctuary interceding for all those who will accept him. For these are the last days of earth history and the Bible tells us that just before Christ put in his second appearance that the mark of the beast crisis will come upon the world. You are seeing it shaping up even in the society that we are now living in, we are seeing it and you don't even know that the last days of earth's history is upon us and it is time to take heed to the word of God. Take heed to the word of God. Our virtue, we are living in judgment times. We are living in judgment times. The crisis actively going through the names of people. The record is being passed through before the all-seeing eye of Jehovah God and you don't even know that your sins are being recorded 
men in the book of heaven. One day soon, you will have to face them. One day soon, you will have to face the, the judge. Murderer, you will have to face the judge. Gunman, you will have to face the judge. Thief, you will have to face the judge. Homosexuals, you will have to face the judge. Scammers, you will have to face the judge of all the earth, which is Christ himself. For God is interceding and he's marking down the deeds that you have done in the body and he's coming with a reward to give every man according as his work shall be. But don't take it for a joke, for Christ will come and just as how you are breathing your breath, that's how the reality of the judgment will be. But what you are here to do is to warn you not to wait, is to warn you to turn your life to Christ before it is eternally too late. For when Christ comes, there will be no more opportunity for you to give your life to Christ, whatever the state will be. If you are sinful, when Christ comes, then your reward will be accordingly. For Christ is coming for a perfect people. Christ is coming for those who have put away the cares of this world, the sinfulness and the lust of the eye, which cover the eyes of the people, for all the minds of the people dwell upon in these days is vanity and the bible says the wise man solomon says all is vanity and vexation of spirit what you're working for is just vanity for it will not profit you in the judgment mark my word tonight mark my word tonight what you're killing yourself over the christmas holiday you cannot carry that in the judgment for what you will carry in the judgment is your corrupter. Are you a cheater tonight? Are you disloyal to your husband tonight? To your wife tonight? For that is what you will carry in the judgment. And that is what the reward will be according to your works. Tonight, the burdens that are being committed that the police cannot solve, God is recording them. Tonight, the scamming, the pickpocket in the crowd that is doing his thing. God is recording tonight. What we are saying to you is that every deed that is done is recorded and will come up to you again in the judgment. So therefore, turn and give a life to Christ. For Christ can remove every sin from the record. Christ can remove and make you clean. Christ has the power to make you a new person, a new man, a new woman. In him, we're inviting you to Christ. We're inviting you to Christ. For soon and very soon, you will run from sea to sea. You will run from shore to shore. And you will not be able to hear the straight word of God. For the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 14, which is the last message to the entire world. The Bible said in Revelation 14, verse 6, and I saw another angel crying in the midst of heaven having everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to preach unto them that dwell in our fair tree that move through the busy city in our fair tree saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water the cry tonight the angel tonight represents god's people that will carry his final message of warning to a dying world yes this world is heading to a part of sure destruction soon and very soon what you're working for will be of no value for already plans are being put in place to correct your freedom. The society don't even know that what is happening in this era of history will be to enslave humanity. You are already slave to society. You are already slave to the social media platform. You are already slave to the things that you do for a living. For Christ has no chance in your life because of business. But Christ is calling to you, telling you, trying to get your attention, telling you that it is a judgment, and judgment is going on. When you go home, you can read the Bible in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 12. Write it down, for it is the final message to you.
that God's judgment is going on and that his angel is saying, worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. God is calling you to worship him as creator God. Worship the true God. Worship the creator that has made heaven and the earth. Bible also tells us, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, and I saw another angel flat saying with a loud voice, Babylon is falling, is falling, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in your forehead or in your hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. While we are here tonight to tell you that Christ is coming. While we are here tonight to tell you to give your life to Christ, we must tell you what the Bible says concerning prophecies. For you have already seen what the Bible had predicted. For the Bible did predict that these days will be perilous, that these days men ought to fail in them for fear. The Bible did predict that you will want to go in the streets and are fearful to go there because of the evilness of men. For the Bible tells us that the love of many shall grow what school. We can see that there is no love in the nation. We can see that there is just violent. The, the, the custom of Jamaica has now become one of a violent nature where no men cannot reason out things anymore. It's just a nature of violence take over the country but the bible has already said that this would be and we are now living in it but the bible did warn that god's people were on the earth not to worship the beast and his image but what we are here to let you know is that this beast and its image is coming up on the rise is taking over this world for we are seeing it for the bible tell us that when the mark of the beast crisis will come, that no man will be able to buy or sell except you have the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. In other words, except you're a part of the system that the beast will govern. For beast's prophecy represents a kingdom. For this beast is not a wild beast. But when you read Daniel chapter 12, Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, it will tell you that a beast represents a kingdom. This kingdom that will cause the mark of the beast crisis that will come upon the world is no other than the United States of America. For notice, they have done a trial run and the nation was blind to it. For in the corona crisis, no man was permitted to buy or sell except you follow a certain policy. What we are here to let you know is that these things, when the mark of the beast crisis come up in its fullness, is the same kind of policy the entire world will follow. But what you are seeing now, the entire world is going digital, cashless. For you must understand that to control, control the economy, to forbid men to buy or sell, the economy must go in a cashless direction. For you must understand tonight, you can't hear, you never hear it. You must understand tonight that when the economy of the entire world is going cashless, it is a means to stop, to prohibit men from buying and selling, except you agree with the system. For the Bible and I predict it, for two things will come. The cashless society that will forbid men to buy or sell except you go along with government policy and the NITS ID which will be adopted by the entire world for it is called the NITS ID in Jamaica but if you do your research the entire world is taking up this system for every man, you, woman and boy on earth will, be, will have to be identified as a part of the system for if you don't go along with the system, then your finances will be cut off. For you must look in what the government is saying concerning the cashless society. You must look into what the government is saying about the needs ID. 
for these things will cause you to lose your religious liberty, your freedom, which also appearance as work, as labor, as protested for. What I'm saying you, to you tonight is that the crisis that the Bible predicts, the mark of the beast, will come. Let me tell you clearly what it is and what it will be. Let me tell you clearly about this system for the United States of America has always been the champion to champion religious liberty, to champion the freedom of its citizen. But the Bible tells us that this nation will change, will no longer value the rights of its citizen. You hear what I'm telling you tonight? For this is based on the word of God, the word of Revelation chapter 13. The Bible tells us that the system that will cause the mark of the beast crisis will also cause your religious liberty to be taken away. What we are seeing now is when the United States of America destroy its own constitution, the entire world will follow in its footsteps. We're seeing it now. Look at what does that mean. We're seeing it when the citizens have less and less right and the power is being <laughs> elevated. Thank you. What to those that, that are leaders in the political realm. Look at what is happening. But they are using an issue which they call the climate issue to let the entire nations of the world adopt one single principle. What you are about to see in this world is a new era. What you are about to see is the entire world coming under one super government. Look out for it. So you, are hearing, you are hearing it here. When you see it come to pass, then you will know that God's judgment is coming upon the world. For when religious liberty is taken away from the people, it is at that time that God will pour out his judgment upon this world. For the Bible tells us that these who receive the mark of the beast or the number of his name will receive the seven last plague that will pour upon the world. Christ's seven last plague is coming. For men has corrupt themselves. Men is living worse than animal. The corruption that is in the heart of men. God will not longer, God will no longer permit men to live and to dwell upon the earth because of the corruption that is causing suffering in our world. No one is safe. The sinful nature of men is taking over. For all that is in the heart of men is just pleasure. For all that is in the heart of men is just self-seeking. For all that is in the heart of men is murder and theft. For God will not look on these things and pass them by forever. But what we are here to let you know is that God is about to work and that a system of worship is coming. A dreadful system that will bound everybody to worship according to the dictate of the state. What we are letting you know is that a day will be set aside for corporate worship right across the world. For this day of worship will begin in America. For you soon hear of it. For a lockdown is coming, which is not the corona lockdown, but a lockdown is coming, which will include the first day of the week. Mark my words tonight. A lockdown is coming, for the governments of the world will claim that this day of lockdown will be for the protection of the planet. But what we are here to let you know is that when the government tell you that this lockdown is for the protection of the planet, that soon, surely, it will drift into a day of worship. That's what we are here to let you know. But God has already set aside a day of worship. That is the reason why he called men and women 
everywhere in Revelation 14, 6 to 6 and 8. To fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. When you go back to Revelation Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us that God created the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. And when he had made man on the sixth day, God set the seventh day for a day of rest, for a day to set aside so that men that he had made will remember their creator God. What you are here to let you know is because man has forget the seventh day Sabbath. That is the reason why they now believe that they were evolved from monkey. That is the reason why men were supposed to rest every seventh day from his labor. Not to think about the cares of this life and to think about their creator God who would make them and set them aside. What you have seen is that man has changed that particular time that God has set aside. For we are now seeing the world is moving in a direction to set aside a particular day of rest, which will be the first day of the week. What I'm here to let you know is that the first day of the week will be set aside for corporate worship. Mark my words tonight. The message may be strange to your ear, but what I'm here letting you know by the clear word of the Lord is that a Sunday system is coming. A Sunday religious system is coming and the governments of this world will implement it. But when this happens, that will be the system that God warns us about. That if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in their forehead or in their hand, what I'm here to let you know is that when this system come into play, anyone who violate this system, the Sunday system, the Sunday worship system, will not be able to buy yourself. That's what I'm here to let you know tonight, that this system of worship will mark the beginning of Christ's second coming. When you see it, then you know that probation is about to close upon planet Earth. That's the message tonight. Christ is coming soon. Christ is coming soon. Take heed to the word of God. Take heed to the word of God. Let your calling be an election show tonight. Don't follow the world, for the world is going nowhere. The world is heading towards shame and destruction. But follow Christ tonight. Follow Christ tonight, follow Christ tonight, for you don't know what tomorrow may bring, you don't know what tomorrow may bring, times are uncertain, times are uncertain, as I'm about to close up tonight, I'm going to make an altar call tonight in the streets, for you don't know what our future holds, you don't know what tomorrow may bring, but tonight you have life, tonight you have energy, Tonight, you are in your rightful mind, and you can accept Christ as your Savior tonight. So before we go, I'm going to make an altar call right here, right on the sign. If it's your desire, if you want prayer, and you want to say, before those great and dreadful times come to pass, I want to give my life to Christ. I want Him to cover me. If that's you tonight, Please walk to the altar as we pray. Please walk to the altar. Is there one tonight? Thank you, my sister. Is there another one tonight? Is there another one tonight? Walk to the altar as we pray. You don't know what tomorrow may bring, but Christ is calling you now. Christ is calling you now. Is there another one tonight? Walk to the altar as we pray. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming again, and his desire is for every man to give himself to him. If you have not taken place in your life, in the arms of Christ, I'm inviting you tonight to do so. Is there another one tonight? Is there another one tonight? Is there another one tonight? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. 
heart's brought up, he's waiting and watching. We're waiting at altar tonight. Watching for you and for me. We want to pray for somebody tonight. Come home, come home. And you walk and leave the altar. Your blood will be on none of our shoulder tonight. For we have come and we have given the opportunity for prayer. We have come and we have given the opportunity for somebody to turn and give their life to Christ. If you did not accept it, and you leave this place tonight without the covering of Christ, then what happened up to you? But we have done what the Lord has set us here to do. Now as we are going to close, as he sing the last stanza, there is still chance for somebody to come. There is still chance for somebody to come. As he sing the last stanza, is there one more tonight? Is there one more tonight? the wonderful love he has promised. Promised for you and for me. Where we have sinned, He has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and for me. Come home. Those who walk on the altar tonight, may God bless you. But as I pray, even as I pray, please bow your heads and ask the Lord to take you as you are. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. I don't know you, but the Lord know you. The Lord know why you walk to the altar tonight. So as I pray, whisper a prayer to the Lord for yourself as I intercede. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, tonight, O oh Lord, as you have given us the commission to come to this spot and to present Christ and Him crucified to the people, to present what will happen in the near future of this world, to warn men not to worship the beast and its image, for sure destruction will come, for the wrath of God we poured out upon those who worship the beast and its image. But it is not your will that any should perish in that manner. It is your will, O oh Lord, tonight, that all in the hearing of my voice that you have spoken to, to turn and give your life to Christ. We know that this is your will, for you have left heaven and you have came and died on Calvary to pardon sinners if we only accept the death that you have died. So we know that, Lord, it is your will, it is your desire to save the sinner from his corrupt ways. And as these, O oh Lord, walk to the altar, you know them. I don't know them, Lord, but you know them. You know each and every one, they are your children. And so, Lord, tonight, I pray and I ask that you will encircle each and every one that have walked into the altar, those that had the desire, but did not have the strength, O oh Lord, I also pray for those. I pray for also, Lord, the troublers tonight, that you will take them home. Let none, O oh Lord, die in their sins, but all, in the hearing of my voice, come to repentance before it is eternally too late. But I pray especially, Lord, for these that have walked to the altar. You know them by name, O oh Lord. 
You said you know even every ear that is on their heads. So you know everything about them, but I place them in the palm of your hands tonight, O oh Lord. We know above all desire that it is your desire for them to surrender their life to you if they have not done so yet to give their self, themselves to you fully and totally so that you can use them to help carry the everlasting gospel. Help them to understand, Lord, the urgency of the time that you are now living in, that these days are unsure, that these days are the final ones of earth history, and that if, if they should die, Lord, without you tonight, there will be no more opportunity for any great days, no more repentance. So help them, Lord, to give their full surrender to you. Help them to search for you as in a treasure. I pray, Lord, for their extended family. That you'll also use them to be an influence of good to these, their family members. That they may join the army that seek to carry the everlasting gospel of your kingdom. Be with them, Lord. Bless them in a very special way. The way that I ask that you will bless them, is that you will forgive them, and that you will touch them, and that you will renew a right spirit in them, so that they may recognize your voice when you speak. This I ask sincerely, Lord, for these that walk to the altar. And I sincerely ask it for them, that they may hear your voice and know where you are leading them to. In Jesus' name I pray.